Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. Welcome to 2022 here at Tappanoff Farm. I hope you're all doing well out there. We've decided to come up to the Shepherd's Hut here, just have a very important meeting yeah. about the year that's just been. Yeah, we thought we'd yeah. just make a little video to summarize 2021, talk about all the good points, the mistakes the that we've made. Points. Most importantly, what we're learning from those things, yeah. the good and the bad, um, and what we're gonna bring forward into this year. So the year started with a whole lot of snow in Scotland. Yeah, a lot more snow than we have now, because we have none now no. at the same time yeah. this year. None of us have seen snow like that in the 10 years that we've lived here, and all the locals were telling us that there hadn't been a winter like this in since 84. 1984. Yeah. yeah, so that was... When and then we were just nippers. Oh, I wasn't alive. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was a lot more common um, mm -hmm. before 84. I think it was a common thing and then yeah. it's become less and less um, normal. But it, it, yeah, we were snowed in. Snowed in, totally yeah. snowed in. We couldn't get um, the car in or out for several days. So I'm checking to see if there's any cars. But anyway, this is the main road. I've actually not seen such a huge amount of snow on the road before. Won't be able to get a car through here until it's been cleared. We don't go yeah, out anyway. Yeah, huge snow drifts along yeah. the road which we went and explored. We were fine, we, we weren't too yeah. desperate to get on with anything so we just no. sat it out. We had plenty of firewood, plenty of food. Yeah, we had to kind of dig out pathways to do the milking and mm -hmm. I think probably the, the kind of toughest thing was the polytunnel really. You know, it's not something oh, yeah. that handles that kind of weather very well. We had to well. clear the snow off it every day. So a bit of a sad way to start start the, the new year was realizing that our dear old milk and goat pea was coming mm. to her last days. I mean she'd always had kind of some arthritis, she was she turned 14. You could hear um, her bones creak when she walked. Yeah and um, yeah it, it was it was obvious that she had kind of been suffering from that but that was getting progressively worse. Obviously the winter was a tough one, all the snow, the cold. Mm -hmm. She then developed um, a, a, an abscess in one of her hooves um, and yeah, I mean, that was something that now I very much recognise because of that learning process. Um, but at the time, that was all quite new to me. There's a certain smell that once you know it, you know it, the smell of abscess. She also was finding it kind of hard to walk at all. The arthritis didn't help that either, but I was... Pick her up in the morning. Yeah, I had to lift her up every morning. Oh, good girl! and did treat that yes. because we didn't want to kind of put pee down just because of something like that so no. treated that learned a lot um about ways of doing that naturally yeah her hoof got better which was brilliant it took quite a long time because it had got quite to, to quite a bad state um but yeah she she got fully better from that but it actually turned out that the arthritis had got so bad so what it came to really was that we had to make that decision mm -hmm. uh, and put pee down um, but it was the best thing to do. Yeah, and that's like an undoubtable uh, decision that you're always going to have to make if you have any size of farm yeah. um, at some point. And yeah, with P, I mean, she was just such a character. She was really a pet in the end, you know, one that gave us milk too, which was great. Um, but she was, so, we were so close to her. So it was very sad, but again, um, an opportunity to learn yeah. and just grow. Um, and I remember the good times because we had a lot of laughs with that goat. P like provided like the best entertainment of yeah. the goat for sure. So <laughs> yeah, she will be truly missed. R.I.P. P. So obviously as the year goes on, we've always got the animals to look after. We had the sheep up in the north field for the first time. We had to keep our chickens inside for a lot of spring. Avian flu hit the country, so with, um, by law here in the UK, we had to put all of the birds, all, the, all our poultry undercover to stop the chances of this disease mm -hmm. being transmitted from the wild birds. That's happening again this year. Yeah, and it's a real pain in the ass. It's, real, it's a real problem uh, to have to deal with. Yeah. Um, but they are actually quite happy in the polytunnel, they scratching are. around, adding their fertility yeah. to the soil so we can grow some good crops there this year. Obviously the reason that we keep goats is to have milk and, and to make cheese, which you've been carrying on with. Last year, 2021, was full of cheese making for me. We cheese had a coming lot out of, of our ears. <laughs> yeah, um, it was so fun and it's been really just, yeah, obviously a, a total passion project really. Um, it's, it's something that, um, yeah, has only grown in my um, love for as I've watched these kind of uh, 
crazy things age over time in our cold room. Um, there's definitely been some failures, but I'd say there's more and more successes as the years go by. So we're going in the right direction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so in April, this fantastic shepherd's hut arrived. Yeah, that was something we've been waiting for for a wee a while. A long time, yeah. Pulling the hut up here was quite an experience. It arrived on the back of a lorry and we had to get it towed up through a field behind a, behind a digger. And it wasn't really that hard to get it no, up through the field. It was more just those nerves, wasn't it? Of yeah. Like, of, of knowing that it was down by the road, it had to come up All the, the field. Up. And it was a... spring, it was quite wet ground. Yeah, it was getting quite wet. The snow had all melted by then. We were all kind of looking yeah, was... through. No fingers, fracking. Yeah. yeah. The whole idea behind this beautiful hut that we're sitting in right now is to generate a bit more income from the farm through agritourism. Over the last year almost, we've mm. been slowly doing this up in between working in the market garden with the veg box, yep. um, finding the time to put into this, which mm. took a lot more time than we realized it was gonna take with, with balancing the other, the day job at the moment, which is selling veg boxes. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of things that you kind of, you have a vision for, and mm. then actually, obviously implementing that sometimes can take a bit longer. So this year we're on target though for getting people renting the shepherd's hut. Yeah, we've just got the compost toilet mm. to finish and then... It's we'll ready be... to go. Mm. We've tested it out a lot over the last yeah. year. We stayed up here a lot um, with family mm. and friends eating up here. It really gave us a chance to work on the finer details, just making sure it's really comfortable, really yeah. a beautiful space to be in. It's got a lovely yeah. log burning stove behind us. There's a yeah. pizza oven and a grill outside. We've got a beautiful wood-fired hot tub. Mm. Yeah. We've been testing, testing road testing. Yeah, we yeah. have to. We have to do these things for yeah. the comfort of our future guests. It is important though because I think, you know, you can only really learn whether things are laid out correctly or you have the right kind of utensils for example yeah. or that yeah, everything's in its right place if mm. you test it out and you see if you can do everything without bringing everything up from the house, yeah. like we were at the yeah. start. Yeah, what one, what a, what a holiday goer would need yeah. to stay in. It's, mm -hmm. It is such a gorgeous space. There'll be more information about how you can book to stay here in the Shepherd's Hut on our website soon. Very soon. So around the time that we were getting the Shepherd's mm -hmm. Hut in place, we had also started designing and uh, landscaping a new area, which was going to be a new area of forest garden. Mm -hmm. and. Kind of at the last minute, we also decided to get a few ponds dug. Yeah, just to increase our kind of water catchment on the farm. There's a lot of water flows yeah. through this farm. Definitely, there was a lot yeah. of water that spring, wasn't Especially there, after then. all the snow mm -hmm. melt. Mm -hmm. So the job was that we were turning uh, a ditch that was already here on the farm into basically an elongated pond, which we've dubbed the canal. And this was years of looking at some of the designs in the permaculture manual. There's a chapter on aquaculture um, where there's some fantastic designs showing how productive um, man-made ponds and canals can be around mm -hmm. the world uh, so this ditch that we had here on the pond I always looked at it and thought mm, we could maybe make that into a canal um, but it gives us lots of other benefits as well one of them being the aesthetic we just love yeah. having water around the sound of it at the very least yeah, is definitely. just beautiful being able to slow down the water that's coming off the farm and, and just capture it just that little bit longer before it leaves the farm is really important to us. Whilst they're brilliant now, it wasn't easy to get there. No. Um, as James alluded to, it was a reasonably last minute decision that we decided to go with digging these this year. We had a feeling that our clay content wasn't that great. No. And so we kind of knew that we might have a problem with the ponds leaking. Yeah, I don't you think just kind of cross your fingers, don't you? And yeah. think, it might just work, because sometimes it does. But they, they leaked quite a bit. This is worse than before. So we thought, okay, well, we've got a few options. The least favorable option was lining it with plastic. But we, we knew we weren't really going to try using uh, puddling clay. We just didn't think that was the right uh, thing to use at the time. So we read up mm. and we learned all about bentonite clay seemed like such a wonder material. I think it is. It is. Um, but I think the, the design and shape of our mm. canal was very hard to apply. We can see how see it how works it, yeah. and how it would work. Mm -hmm. um, so we had to go with a plastic liner in the yeah. end. Good lessons learned. We learned yeah. how, what bentonite clay was. I'd never come yeah. across that before. But at least using the pond liners meant that the ponds weren't leaking um, because downslope from the pond we had planned on planting a whole bunch of fruit trees huh. so it was great to be able to dry up the soil below these this ditch that's always been there mm -hmm. and make it a bit better environment for planting fruit trees. There was so many trees in the end that we actually extended the 
new forest garden. Yeah, it got a bit bigger than we thought it was going to be. Yeah, but that was great. It's yeah. a beautiful space. So that's been a brilliant kind of addition to the farm this yeah. year. Yeah, they're mostly Scottish heritage apple varieties, um, but it's plums and cherries and we've got uh, hazelnut and all the willow and the alder that was already on site. So it's a very varied um, multi-layered forest garden. Something that we're going to be expanding even more on this year is planting a lot more trees. So expanding out from that area mm -hmm. up to the hut here so that um, the hut is on the edge of a small forest garden. So obviously uh, at the same time as digging these canals and ponds and doing the new forest garden, we were also beginning to plan well, and sow the seeds for our market garden, for our veg box, and another season of our CSA scheme. We did still do that last year, um, although we reduced the size because we knew we would want to spend a lot more time working on this, the shepherd's hut. And along with that, we decided to transition to no dig, knowing that we wouldn't be developing the garden at its, uh, in, in its entirety, at its mm. full size. And so we thought that would be... <laughs> a bit simple uh, but it turned out not to be yeah the weather um, didn't really help with that no although we have like recently <laughs> realized that we complain every and year every year about how complain. bad the weather is at that time of year it's uh, as if learned. we haven't learned <laughs> that it always is and we should just presume but anyway it was a tough spring we did it did really feel like the most tough spring I'm i sure think it, it was it was <laughs> it was that really obviously push things back a little yeah. and then the compost that we did find mm -hmm. locally finally uh, that we could use, find locally in a large enough amount mm. that we could use for, for kind of transitioning our garden to no dig and adding this thick mulch of compost on top of our beds was great in a lot of senses especially because it was local mm -hmm. um, uh, however uh, bindweed yeah bindweed just really didn't want it to spread throughout the rest of the veg garden and into no. the forest garden tree rows because we just know, you know, you blink and five years later you've yeah. got bindweed absolutely everywhere. And of course that came on top of the fact that the compost wasn't actually quite probably the... Uh, composted enough. It wasn't composted enough. It was a much more stressful start of season than we'd anticipated considering we had a much smaller uh, member base for mm -hmm. our CSA scheme. Mm -hmm. Um, it was the polytunnel that saved our bacon yeah. because oh that gave us God. four weeks of veg boxes. Yeah, because of the less less people, we could actually fully feed everyone for weeks yeah. just from the polytunnel. We had to take a bit of a break uh, at, and sort of tell our, our members that we would had to, we have to take a few weeks off for the crops outside to kind of catch up. Yeah, so we kind um, of did four weeks on, and then I think it was two weeks off. Yeah. And then, and then got on with the rest of the season, which turned yeah. out to be fine, really. Um, everything, it always does usually come together. Yeah. And it is surprising just how much you can get out of a garden. Oh, totally. So we got some beautiful veg this year. Yeah, yeah. we tried out some new varieties and some new veg in general. Yeah, we hadn't corn. grown corn before. Yeah. Um, and so we grew a purple variety um, and then a kind of standard yellow variety as well. And we grew some really good squash in the yeah. tunnel. Um, mm. A few different varieties, lots of beans. Yeah. Um, the tomatoes did really well in the tomato tunnel, the small tunnel. They did, tunnel. yeah. Yeah, they were new varieties this year, partly because I couldn't actually get hold of uh, a lot of seeds sold out, so I couldn't get hold of the, the ones that I'd wanted to, but it was great to get to try some new ones. Um, and probably the best performer was one called Jen's Tangerine mm -hmm. and it's just it just did really well it just produced tons of kind of small golf ball sized mm. orange tomatoes that tasted really good too so yeah, yeah. Color. Mm, they were yeah. gorgeous definitely had better years um, uh -huh. like we were saying it was a very tough growing season so yeah. I think all in all it did it did well it did very well for the weather it had. yeah but we we know the things that we want to improve on mm. uh, this year namely the material you know that we're using as a growing medium yeah uh, which would bring us on to so the pakashi yeah. which is fermented organic material if you want to check out more about this you can watch a couple of vlogs we made um i'll put a link above yeah it was one of our big exciting learning uh moments of 2021 mm -hmm. something that we're definitely bringing through into 2022 definitely so yeah. making the bakashi was a result of mucking out the goat shed the goat buyer yes. uh, this is something that we have to do every year but this year we just decided to muck it out and leave it in a nice long um, windrow yeah. <laughs> 
a windrow and make bokashi and we had a couple of fantastic volunteers at the time yeah. Finn yeah. and Becky who we got on with really well and yeah. they really helped us um, achieve some great stuff working out the goat shed mm -hmm. um, as and many other things that they helped yeah. us with over their time volunteering with us here on the farm. Mm -hmm. Making the Bukashi was a big um, achievement. Yeah, uh, it was a total highlight of yeah. the year because it was like an experiment on mm -hmm. the farm and it's been so far successful. Yeah, we looks looking like it's fermented very well down mm -hmm. to a fertilizer um, compost as such. And it looks like we've got about 14 or 15 cubic meters of material to be able to use in our node dig system. Which, if any of you out there have made kind of compost before, know that's that's a, a large amount of compost. That we haven't make. had to turn. Yeah, that's exactly. the other, the other big thing. Minimum effort. We didn't have to turn yeah, it at all yeah, yeah. Um, through the fermentation process. Mm -hmm. And the magic of Bokashi. Tree hay? That's something we put a lot of time yes. into this year. Yeah, I, I love tree hay. Tree hay is something that I really what kind of... What does it of, taste like? It's delicious, yeah. The tree hay is something that we've wanted to increasingly... Mm -hmm. um, Increase. Every year. And I'd say that 2021 was our biggest effort yet. Mm -hmm. um, we made a video about the tree hay, if you want to check that out. It's been great to feed to the sheep and the goats uh, mm. so far this winter and um, we, we do feed them hay as well, um, grass hay. Uh, we are definitely increasing the amount that we can rely on the tree hay um, and hope to do that a bit more every year. Dead hedges, we've been making oh. a lot of dead hedges. Rogers. Dead hedges. We've been making a lot of dead hedges this year. We started oh, off. Yeah the year making one and we finished the year yeah, making one. Yeah, that's so true. That's such a yeah. lovely circle. Yeah. That's oh, and we, we put one all around the shepherd's hut here as well. Yes. We've been wanting to make a devoted dead hedge mm. video tutorial for a long time now and a lot of you keep on asking if we can make one. The more that we do them, the more that we learn mm -hmm. about them and so we keep wanting to kind of like improve on that video. So yeah. it just keeps taking longer because we do want a really good video yeah. for you guys to... And it will come out, we will make yeah. one. Do you think we've covered everything? I reckon so. Do you? I don't know, I feel like we've missed a lot out, but I think we feel like this every year. Um, we don't always remember everything we do. It's what's so great about making these vlogs, is it yeah, helps it's us like a remember diary. what we've actually been doing. Mm -hmm. um, we've dried off the goats. That was something that we've discussed yeah. quite a lot in quite recent vlogs. Mandy, our main milker, should be in kid. Fingers yeah. crossed. Yes. Uh, and then when will you start milking again? It will definitely be towards the end of this summer. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a wee while yet before we start getting fresh milk. It is, and we're really missing it. So it's probably quite a good thing though that mm -hmm. we are going to have a bit of a break from milking next year, even mm -hmm. though that's going to be a bit weird not hearing you clanking around with the milk buckets mm -hmm. and getting this fantastic milk. It's probably going to be quite good because as well as, well, Mandy kidding, and maybe our Shetland sheep lambing, no. and then also, in May, we're going to be a bit busy too. Yeah, having a baby. Just having a baby. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got a wee one yeah. expected uh, mm -hmm. start of May. Yeah. Um, so we, yeah, we, we're fully aware we're going to have quite a busy year next yeah. year. Earlier last year when we started planning that we wanted to start a family, we also realised that that might impact quite a bit on the market garden and yeah. the veg boxes. Um, yeah. So this year we're deciding to close the veg boxes uh, yep. We'll still be growing vegetables. In mm -hmm. fact, we're super, super excited about growing veg just for us. Yeah. For the first time in what feels like a long time since yeah. before starting the, the veg box business. Exactly. Because mm -hmm. on the whole, you know, our, our main income was from selling these veggies. Mm. And on the whole, all of the veggies leave the farm and go off yeah. into our local community, which has been fantastic. And mm -hmm. we've really valued having that employment as local producers. Yeah. But this year, we're dubbing it the year of the home. Mm -hmm. We've got our baby coming. We've got the goats mm -hmm. and the, the sheep potentially birthing as well. So it's gonna be a very wholesome, homely <laughs> feel to the to the year this we year. We hope, uh, yeah. because it's never that wholesome. Yeah, as we often allude to, the market garden does take up a lot of time uh, mm -hmm. when we're operating it as a veg box scheme. Mm -hmm. um, and I think for us, we just are noticing more and more that that by drawing away from doing that, it's enabling us to be able to work on these other areas of the farm that we've mm -hmm. semi-neglected over the recent years. Um, so we're just going to be doing that. But still growing tons of veg. Yeah. Um, still selling it locally, just yeah. not as a veg box no. scheme. We don't want to lose that connection with our local community. No. Um, yeah, we love growing food and sharing that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there's, there's a, 
a big difference between that the selling it and the whole veg box uh, mm -hmm. operation. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, we're just taking a step back from that for now. That kind of wraps it up, really. It does. Finishing yeah. on babies and yeah. plans for next year mm -hmm. of more focus on providing food for the home, working <laughs> on our tourism side mm -hmm. of things with renting out this shepherd's hut to people who want to come and stay on yeah. a permaculture farm and see yeah. what that's all about. I think it's going to be a busy year. It is, yeah. We say that every year. <sighs> But we're excited to bring you along yeah, on that journey. Definitely. And I hope you guys have been enjoying the vlogs mm -hmm. over the last 12 months. Um, thank you so much for all your support to get over 10,000 subscribers yeah. and now up to uh, 16,000, I think we're yeah. at, at the moment. It's been a great achievement for us. Huge jump. Yeah, up I didn't expect year. that at mm -hmm. all. All right, guys, that's us wrapping up our 2021 in review. Hope yeah. you've enjoyed that. Just leaves us to say again, thank you so much to all our subscribers for supporting mm -hmm. us. All right, guys, take care. Lots of love. Have a great 2022. See ya. Q montage. Q montage. <laughs> you must not rest. Never you rest. Must not rest. Always play.